Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. My name is Guru Hariharan, and I'm the CEO of Boomerang Commerce, a dynamic price optimization platform for enterprise e-commerce. Before I tell you about Boomerang Commerce, let's start with something obvious. Online retail sales in the US, it is exploding. Something that's not so obvious. Not everyone is growing at the same rate. I worked at Amazon for many years, and there's really one huge reason why Amazon has been able to consistently outperform its competitors. Amazon has built a phenomenal analytical engine that allows them to make pricing decisions every 15 minutes. An average retailer takes 43,000 minutes. That's one month. An average retailer is just not able to compete in this new world of e-commerce. There's a huge analytical divide. Retailers just don't have the firepower to make quick decisions for all their products. Let's take an example. This is Mr. Retailer. John is a category manager for cameras and camcorders at a very large retailer. It's an electronics retailer. John's problem today is that his revenues are going down and he's losing market share. What can he do about it? John is not able to move products because John has to compete with 20 other online retailers who are selling the same products. And he has to do that without losing profitability. And he's got to do that for 25,000 products every single hour. And that is a non-trivial problem. And that's where we come in. Introducing Boomerang Commerce. Let's switch to the demo, please. I'm John, and I log into my Boomerang Commerce dashboard. This is connected to my e-commerce platform. The first thing I want to do today is to go in and check out my competitive positioning. I pull up my competitive management dashboard, and the first thing I note over here after I put in my category is that I see a pretty graph. The red portion of this graph represents products which are highly uncompetitive for me. Green portion, which are highly competitive for me. Boomerang also allows me to do competitive analysis over many websites of my choice. In this case, it is Amazon.com. Wow, that seems like a huge problem. That's the reason I'm losing market share. I'm uncompetitive on more than 60% of my products. What can I do about it? I'm gonna create a new pricing strategy. I give it a name and a description, and I choose my product group. Gives me some key statistics. The first thing I note over here is that the competitiveness over here is low, but the gross margin rate is pretty high. So maybe there's some room to play with the prices over here. Great, now let's set the strategy. I set the strategy to maximize revenue and maintain margin dollars. In other words, grow my top line, do not lose profits, do not lose my bottom line. Great, now let's set a date. I give it a start date and let's say I wanna run it for a month. Before I hit submit, I want to simulate a what if strategy. Boomerang has looked up the, last, the past historical data and has given me some projections in terms of revenue and profits. And looking at this, this looks pretty exciting to me. I'm ready, I'm all set, I'm gonna hit submit. Great, now I'm gonna switch gears. I'm gonna show you a real case study. This is a Canon Rebel camera from one of our customers. You're seeing a graph between October and December of last year. The blue portion on the top represents traffic. This is page views for that product. On the bottom, it represents sales and revenues for that, for that product in that month. And as you see, this is pretty much a dead skew. You're getting a lot of traffic on the site, but you're not able to convert. Boomerang started around end of December, early Jan, and let's see what happens. 
boom. Traffic remains the same, but sales goes up. And we did this for many of John's products, and John today is a happy man. One thing I want to note over here before we end the demo is that we are not a price comparison engine. You cannot achieve these results consistently with just price matching. We are a price optimization company. Let's go back to the presentation, please. Boomerang Commerce is live and is in production and is pricing over 100,000 products every single day for some of the largest retailers on the internet. And we are delivering hard business results. We've increased sales by more than 20% on very large revenue basis. And we've more than doubled margins for many categories. We are a SaaS product, which means we monetize with monthly subscription fees, and we currently have bookings over $10 million in multi-year contracts. The company has achieved product market fit, and we are ready to scale. We added four times more business just this past quarter as opposed to the entire of last year. We are Boomerang Commerce, a dynamic, price optimization platform. If you have an e-commerce store, we can come in and dynamically price your items for competitiveness and profitability. Check us out and ask us for a demo on boomerangcommerce.com. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Judges, you want to jump in? So, so uh, thank you and congratulations. Um, so, a couple of qu questions for you. Is one is is that um, where, where does the data come from, and how dynamic is the pricing? Because the example you gave up there, I was expecting you were going to do ten minutes. That John was going to do, uh, and you did it over one month. Um, so, you know, how dynamic is it, and where, what are the data sources, and how? sustainable are those data sources? So there's a few questions. I'll try to answer one after the other. Yeah. First of all, the graph that we showed, um, it, uh, I don't know if I explained it correctly. It's, it's dynamic pricing on a daily basis, but you saw the graph between uh, January and March, the one where it really took off. And, but the prices, prices were being changed on a daily basis. We have the ability internally to change prices as quickly as you want, maybe minute by minute, two minutes, five minutes, whatever. What we have seen is that retailers up until now, the status quo today is that they are changing prices every three months, and they are happy with one day. So we're doing everyday price changes, but we've already gotten requests from our existing customers who want to just ramp it up and do... And do you, do you scrape competitive sites? Yeah, or? so the inputs, to answer your question on the inputs, there are two types of inputs that we get on a broad level. Number one is internal demand elasticity data, which we have based on uh, the past order history, and we also suck in omniture feeds and stuff like that. So we have a good history in terms of what your demand elasticity from a view-based conversion is, and also prices, and so on. Uh, in addition to that, the second part of the data that we have is the profitability data, where um, we look at gross profits and contribution profits, the variable profits. Because e-commerce, it's a new world altogether. It is not about gross profits anymore. It's really coming down to the wire, to shipping and transportation and logistics, gift wrapping. There's like 100 different uh, um, variables that go into sort of defining the profits which we, which we go into the retailer. So there are two, uh, to summarize, there are two data points, competitiveness and uh, And uh, if a customer signs up, do they, do they share their data with other customers? With other customers? Yes, yeah, so with Best Buy signing no, so, up to CSC and anonymized version of that. So um, there, are, there are portions which are derivative or, or the, or the uh, algorithms that we run and the, and the uh, patterns that we see, that's our proprietary data that we are able to sort of um, create a good flywheel effect out of. But each retailer comes in and he gets like almost like a Chinese wall. His, yeah. his retailers doesn't, uh, uh, they don't share data. And, and I wasn't sure, uh, Guru, you answered, but we do scrape all the competitor websites across the major retailers, uh, look at product matches, your catalog, look at the entire catalog, which is like 100,000 products which you may have, see what each product does, your key competitors carry, what is the price change they are making on a daily basis, and so on. Yeah, we, we do scrape the data from public data sources. So I'm curious, congratulations on the bookings and the success. Uh, within the, you, you highlighted a camera that was for sale. Is there specific verticals of products or types of companies that uh, 
work best for this type of dynamic algorithm? Yeah, so uh, we are starting with, uh, uh, so we are currently focused on consumer electronics, general merchandiser, uh, department stores, and uh, home improvement, industrial. So these are, uh, and these retailers actually make up, a uh, video analysis, they make up actually more than 80% of uh, retailers who make more than $50 million in annual revenue. So that market is pretty huge. And for this market, definitely, and this, that's our immediate focus, right? And there, uh, I mean, you can see Sears, you can see Staples, you can see Redash Shag, you have each one in each category. So we are able to show uh, significant value for each of those. Great. Do, do, do you think that's, that your um, target market is, is a growing market? Because um, there's one, one school of thought out there is that uh, e-commerce retailers that are competing directly against Amazon are going to eventually lose market share. Oh, we think it's a growing market. So we, if you look at just the last four years or five years of internet retail or 500, uh, there are two things which are growing, which is really exciting to us. Number one is that the entire size of e-commerce is growing pretty exponentially. So, and then each of these retailers themselves, whether or not they are brick and mortar or online only, are, are their e-commerce is growing. Sorry. So I'll come to your second question. I know where uh, the, 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 the other question that you asked me was, um, are, the, are people dropping off? Is there consolidation happening? That's probably what you're asking. We, we've seen that in the last three to four years, um, the number of retailers that, have, that are coming to our TAM, our TAM, our addressable market is $50, $50 million and above in annual retail sales online. And we've seen that number of retailers to be actually growing year over year, almost like anywhere between, say, 10 to 20%. There is churn. There are people who are coming in and out. There are some uh, merges happening and so on. But it's definitely those numbers are going up. Okay, thanks. And definitely the market uh, outside U.S. is growing even faster, right? And the number of players outside U U.S. is actually much, growing much, much faster. And I one mean, of our customers is yeah. China, uh, is a Chinese company. Yeah. We're actually going to be selling pretty quickly over here. We're starting a pilot with a very large German retailer. Okay, thank you. So if you take this out to its end conclusion, and every single retailer is using your platform, there'd be no value to anybody then, right? Yeah, so, uh, so, so, <laughs> so, uh, so actually surprisingly, uh, when we talk to many of these retailers, their key competitor is not each other, their key competitor is Amazon, right? right. So in effect, actually, uh, to a large extent, in many categories, they're not competing with each other, they're actually competing with Amazon, number one. Uh, so number two. Let me just make sure I understand that. So, so what you're saying is Amazon will never buy your technology because they have it themselves. Yeah. So what you just do is you make the industry competitive with Amazon. Exactly. That's exactly. number one. And, uh, uh, and another thing is uh, we think that pricing will become so, I mean, it's already so critical. It's top of mind for every CEO, right? And uh, it will be almost like without this, you'll be going to a gunfight with a knife. Right? You need to be really equipped right, to even survive. Right? So think of search engine marketing. Right? I mean, before Efficient Frontier and all these guys were there, people were doing rule-based bids and all that stuff, and then these guys said, hey, man, that's not possible. Right? I mean, you can't man manage million keywords doing rule-based optimization. Right? So you need to do algorithmic optimization. So we are doing something like that. Uh, the second thing is, even if there are retailers who are competing with each other, like say, let's take Best Buy and UAG, right? There's a category manager, John, Best Buy cameras, there's another guy, new ag cameras. The Best Buy guy, he will have uh, a goal which is, okay, I got a promotion from Canon, I want, to, I want to move Canon cameras as fast as possible, so I'll do a special promotion. The new ag guy, I didn't make my numbers in profits last quarter, so I don't better miss them this quarter, right? So even though same category, same products, business goals are different, so the pricing will be actually different. I just want to offer a compliment. I think that you found a really big need, and I like the fact that I think it's really great whenever your software disrupts. And I think that when you end up saying, well, so this is a place where software can disrupt pricing, and it's an area that not a lot of disruption has already happened, um, it's, it's great. You referenced in your presentation that you were up 4x uh, in Q1 over all of last year. Um, along what measure? Revenue, clients? Along, we measure ourselves with ARR. Uh, annual recurring revenue, okay. and uh, so our ARR basically has, as, as we exited Q1 March, we were four times as the end of last year. Okay. Yeah. And do you charge, do you charge a, a fixed amount per customer per annum as a subscription, or does it vary by the sales level? Yeah, it r varies by a number of things. The first <laughs> thing is the revenue that uh, they make, and uh, that also drives the, deri is derived from the value that we can create. So when we go into a, a retailer, we do a pilot to demonstrate our value, 
And uh, based on that, we also try to see, we are, we are able to gauge the um, amount of value and their, uh, the number of the types of SKUs or products that they have, number of competitors they want to manage in real, uh, in real time at any given point. So these are mainly three things that come up in sort of defining our prices. And the pilots, by the way, we always want, even if you get an offer to do a full ACV deal, we actually insist on a pilot because the pilots actually end up showing humongous value and we're able to sit on the table and show the financial impact. In fact, in the last pilot that we did, we displaced IBM. And they would, they would, those are the guys who are on the table. That's who lost and we won. And, uh, and these are like big retailers, right? And so um, we end up going through a pilot uh, uh, period and sort of uh, played based on value, revenue, number of SKUs, and competitors. And what's the average then? What do you charge on average per customer per annum? So today our uh, ACVs are in seven figures on an average, and we have um, close to, um, uh, we, we've, got, we've got pretty large seven-figure ACV, or uh, CV, contract value numbers. No, but I know contract value. Yeah. On average, it's more than a million. More than a million per yeah. annum per yeah. customer? Yes, yes. Wow. I mean, again, one other thing to also think about our predecessors, the guys who actually did brick and mortar price optimization, these, com these companies also used to charge seven figure uh, numbers, eight figure numbers uh, for, for price optimization. Okay. This is, by the way, this is the number one problem that a retail CEO is going through today, or at least, at least it's the number one, two, or three. It's not five or 10, <laughs> you know? So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a major issue that they're facing. There are companies going bankrupt, there are companies coming up because of this ability and not, not, or not having this ability. <laughs> And the key reason we can charge a high or we, simply because the value is directly on the bottom line and uh, what we're doing here, the customers, actually they plan to start reporting these results to the street two quarters or three quarters from now. So the impact is at that level. So, uh, I mean, that's why uh, the, the large size deals are, uh, I mean, they are common actually. In fact, the pilot, when we show the EBITDA numbers, we, some of the math that we've also seen other, the, our, our, uh, our customers do, they would actually multiply the EBITDA by PE to come up with a market cap uh, change and so on. And that, those are pretty staggering numbers. Well, I mean, you're a real outlier then because the, many of the other companies we've seen that sell software to e-tailers, they provide value, but they end up not being able to charge what you can charge. And there's only so many in the top 500 e-tailers that you can address as in a, you know, a real meaningful market and they struggle to build Massive, you know, no, you're companies. absolutely right. We are not a social uh, company. I'm nothing against them, but it's not a hundred thousand dollar deal. These are seven figure deals, oh, and uh, again, like you know, uh, uh, we are actually a team of ex Amazon guys, and we've seen this work and not work at Amazon more than successes that the street reports or the 10Ks tell you. We actually know the failures having worked with these companies before, and so. Um, in fact, the head of engineering sitting in the backstage. All of these guys, we've actually done these things before and in different parts of the organization, and we uh, really have a very good advantage, really an unfair advantage to go win in this market. Can I have one more question? <laughs> can, can you help with non-commodity products? Absolutely. So we actually are starting to do, we've already done, uh, so we're already live with uh, private label brand, uh, branded or, or store branded private label products. We're doing that. Apparel? Can you, can you do apparel? So apparel makes up about 12% of our TAM. So we are, that's going to be our next, like it's, it's, uh, it's coming. Uh, so it's not a low hanging fruit, definitely. So we are going after the low hanging fruits, right. which are like more than 60, 60 to 70% of the market right now. Okay. And uh, in apparel, there are actually three things, which is uh, the pricing, the initial price, the private label price, and then the price optimization and then markdowns. We already, do very, we already do very well in uh, price optimization and markdowns. It's the private label pricing which we need to crack, okay. which we are beginning to do in other categories, not in apparel. One but more thing we can do. Sorry, we got to no, That's it. Thank you very much. You guys did an awesome job. That <laughs> yeah. was boomerang commerce.